Welcome everybody to a review of the latest Eureka release, which is Creeping Horror. So four horror films from the early 30s to the mid 40s. And uh, yeah, been looking forward to this for a very long time, ever since, quite frankly, since they announced it. And uh, yeah, this was supposed to be released on the 17th of April, so I'm not quite sure why I received it on the 8th of April, considering that's, you know, more than a week before its official release, but still. Really, really excited to get round to it. So that's why I watched all four films fairly immediately. And the first of which is from 1933, and that is Murders in the Zoo. So this is directed by A. Edward Sutherland, who also did The Invisible Woman, one of the sequels to The Invisible Man. And it clocks in at 62 minutes long, stars Charles Ruggles, who was also in The Invisible Woman, as well as Bringing Up Baby and Ramro, as well as Lionel Atwill, who I've seen 11 films from before which include The Hound of the Baskervilles from 1939, The Devil is a Woman and five of the Frankenstein films, as well as Man Made Monster, which was in one of the previous Eureka horror releases. Uh, stars also Randolph Scott, who have seen nine films before, who was also in the likes of Buchanan Rides Alone, Decision at Sundown and Ride the High Country. Went on to do a numerous successful westerns in the 50s and 60s. And uh, yeah, it's about Dr. Gorman, who is a millionaire adventurer who travelling around the world in search of dan who goes around travelling around the world in search of dangerous game. His bored, beautiful, much younger wife entertains herself in the arms of other men. In turn, Gorman uses his animals to keep kill these men. Gorm um, when in New York when in New York City Zoo suggests a fundraising gala, Gorman sees a chance to uh, dispatch one of these dashing men and anyone else who might cross him. So uh, yeah, this is on the whole an entertaining effort that is well paced while it doesn't outstay its welcome. The cast is also great. I love the setting of the titular uh, zoo. The animals are well used. It is predominantly engrossing. It has its funny scenes thanks to Charles Ruggles, who is a well-known comic actor. And the finale is well executed while being rather poetic. So, uh, yeah, and it has a really rather quite violent scene at the beginning where one of the lovers of our lead actor's wife uh, gets his mouth sewn up. And you see his expression on his face when all of the sewn up has been done and there's Fair bit of blood around his mouth and all that long it's yeah quite graphic and uh, yeah it's quite a graphic kill scene at the end as well so uh yeah on the whole really rather quite impressed with that one and then from 1942 we have night monster so this is directed by ford beeb or bb uh, i don't know how you say it really but yeah he directed the invisible man's revenge another sequel to the invisible man cox in at 72 minutes long so this is the longest film in this collection so it's Ralph Morgan, who was also in Weird Woman, a, a film from the Inner Sanctum series, which again is another um, collection of films that Eureka released. It uh, also stars Don Porter, who was in She-Wolf of London, 7-Eleven Ocean Drive and The Turning Point, as well as Irene Hart Hervey, who was in Play Misty for Me, Destry Rides Again, The Count of Monte Cristo from 1934, and Manhandled, and in a supporting role, Faye Helm, who was in The Wolfman, Phantom Lady, and Calling Dr. Death, again, another film from the Inner Sanctum series. And this is about Kurt Ingston, who is a rich recluse who invites the doctors who left him a hopeless cripple to his desolate mansion in the swamps as one by one they meet their horrible deaths. So, uh, yeah, this is the longest of the four, like I said, but it is no less well-paced because of that extra running time. And, in fact, it gives it uh, the chance to have a more complex plot along with more compelling characterization. The setting is also great, be it even when the plot is taking place in the creepy house or the foggy ground surrounding it. The cast is rather good, it is engrossing, especially when it comes to its mystery element. The cinematography is really rather well done, it has solid production value and it is generally entertaining. Just a shame that by the credits end, two characters simply vanish from the plot without any explanation and they are Bella Lugosi and... Uh, one of the other ones I can't remember the name of now, but yeah, two prominent characters in the plot, especially Bella Lugosi, who's a butler for the house, and they just simply vanish. No explanation whatsoever, you know, and it's just a little bit disconcerting, quite frankly. And uh, yeah, and it does take a fair bit of suspension of disbelief when it comes to the reveal of the titular monster. But still, the rest of the film's fairly good, and yeah, even though it is the longest of the uh, four films, it still is only, you know, 72 minutes long or whatever, so... Uh, yeah, it doesn't outstay its welcome regardless. And then from 1941, don't tell me why, ask me why they put the films in, not in release date order, but they didn't. But yeah, still, from 1941, we have Horror Island. Ooh. 
So, uh, yeah, this is directed by George Wagner, who also did Man Made Monster and The Climax. Two films that were in two different kind of collections from Eureka, as well as The Wolfman, another connection there. So, between the other films. And, uh, yeah, this got 60 minutes long, so it's the shortest of the four. So, it's Dick Farron, who was in fir the first two Mummy sequels, um, The Mummy's Hand and The Mummy's Tomb, as well as The Atomic Submarine and The House of the Seven Gables, alongside Vincent Price. And it also stars Leo Corelio, who was in The Phantom of the Opera from 1943, and Peggy Moran, who was in The Mummy's Hand, again, another Mummy sequel. So, uh, yeah, this is about a Dan on his luck businessman who always organises an excursion to Sir Henry Morgan's Island for a treasure hunt, only to encounter a mysterious phantom and murder. So, uh, yeah, although this is a little thinly plotted and it takes until nearly halfway through its mere 60 minute running time to get to the titular island, this is still a fun effort that has characters that are enjoyable to watch, along with several laughs on offer. The island is also appropriately spooky. The mystery aspect coupled with the treasure hunt helps the plot to be engrossing. Despite being on the low budget side, this only cost around $93,000, which is really not that much. It doesn't really look as low budget as it is. The cinematography is on point. The pacing is solid. I like the prior entry that this, uh, it, this is part of. The ending is poetic. Uh, I say the prior entry, but I'm terp in terms of word is in the zoo because I watched this in this uh, collection in terms of release date. So, uh, yeah. So, it's nothing remarkable, but for an hour of your time, you can do a lot worse than this. So, uh, yeah. And finally, from 1946, we have House of Horrors. So, uh, yeah. This is directed by Gene Yarbrough, who also did She Wolf of London and The Devil Bat. This clock's in at 65 minutes long. So has Rondo Hatton, who was in The Pearl of Death, uh, one of the Sherlock Holmes films starring Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce. It also stars Ma Martin Colsleck, who was in The Mummy's Curse, She Wolf of London, as well as Likes of 36 Hours, The Flesh Eaters, Pursuit to Algiers, again, another Sherlock Holmes film, and The Frozen Ghost, one of the In the Sanctum films, again. And it also stars Robert Lowry, who was in The Mummy's Ghost, as well as Virginia Grey, who was in The Naked Kiss, the first airport film, and Target Earth. So, uh, yeah, an unsuccessful sculptor saves a maddened man named the Creeper from the drowning. Seeing an opportunity for revenge, he tricks the psycho into murdering his critics. So, uh, yeah, this fourth and final film in this release is potentially my favourite of them all, which primarily comes down to the great cast, especially in terms of Hatton and Colslet, while it is well-paced and genuinely engrossing. The cinematography is also rather excellent. Hatton is, has a suitably menacing presence. The characterisation of Colslet's character is well done. It is entertaining and it is enjoyable watching the police try to solve the series of brutal murders. So, uh, yeah, it's not my favourite of the Eureka horror releases that they've done. They've done plenty of other ones, like the uh, Michael Mayhem release and um, the Boris Karloff at Columbia release and stuff like that. But it's still a solid effort. Three of the films are give three and a half out of five. Uh, five so that's Murders at the, in the Zoo, um, Night Monster and House of Horrors. And then I give... Horror Island three stars out of five which is yeah still not the highest rated that I've given any of these films in these collections before but still you know they're still all work perfectly watchable and given that they're very short in length you know like I said the longest of the films is only 72 minutes long and the shortest is 60 minutes long they're not so long that they get frustrating despite their flaw so uh, yeah which is all well and good and it's got a really nice booklet as well with it which has a couple of shots from the film as you can see uh, yeah, that's Randall Hatton, by the way, on the back there. And yeah, the booklet basically has all of the cast and the crew for each of the films, which, yeah, is interesting to look through. And uh, yeah, then you've got They Love, They Hate, They Kill, Investigating Murders in the Zoo by Craig Ian Mann. And then you've got A Blitzkrieg of Terror, Night Monster by John Tolson. And then you've got Swell Horror Show of Stunts Bellahooing Horror Island by John Talson. And finally, you've got Meet the Creeper Exploring House of Horrors by Craig Ian Mann. And uh, yeah, they've um, had a decent uh, restoration as well. There is a couple of, I'd say one of the films at least has a little bit of sound issues. There's a little bit of popping here and there. But on the whole, they've done a solid job with the, uh, with the restoration of these films because... Yeah, these have not had a Blu-ray release in the UK at least before, so it's nice to see. And yeah, double disc, four films across two discs, two films per disc. And uh, yeah, I particularly like the uh, printed disc in for this one. 
which has one of the alligators in shadowy form from Murders in the Zoo. So, uh, yeah, like I said, not my favourite of the collections that Eureka have released, but um, I was more excited than I have been satisfied after watching them. Um, but still, overall, a really, really solid release, and I highly recommend it if you're into these classic horror films, which I am. I adore classic pre-1950s horror films, and these were four were a joy to watch, even if they're not the best of the uh, bunch that Eureka have released in the past. But still, well worth getting. It is a little bit on the pricey side. It's twenty six ninety nine. So if you're not wholly sure about these films, I would wait until they go on sale. But nonetheless, thank you for watching. If you've seen any of these films before, I'd like to hear your thoughts on them. But I'll see you in the next one. Bye.